So if you want to live off-grid or you want to be prepared for the next solar storm, you need some way to power all of your synths. And you are cheap and you don't want to spend a lot of money, so you go for something. You can go for an old battery like this. Leisure battery, but it's not that good but you could do it really cheap or for almost for free just use one of these 12 volt sockets and some car charger and plug it into or clamp it onto this old battery and you're pretty much good to go but i i want to do something a little bit more professional i'm not an electrician so don't listen to my advice but i bought this life co 4 battery and it's got a plus and a minus and i just hooked up some wires to charge it with this grid charger i can charge it with this grid charger or i can plug it into this socket and that would probably work it's not i got no fuse on this one yet so it would have would be a bit dangerous but i want to do something more advanced you can charge a computer or your phone or almost everything with a usb c pd nowadays but i want to have um, an inverter just in case so i can maybe run my homemade cinema from this i'm not sure it's got enough power but we'll try that out later and i also want my solar panels to be able to be hooked up to this battery box so i will try to fit everything i need inside some kind of wooden box i make myself and uh, let's try it so there are many advantages of these life pull 4 batteries over these old lead acid or something else batteries the life pull 4 batteries can be charged up to like 3000 times or more and they they can be discharged to like 30 percent or something so they can be while well, these can just be discharged to like 50 percent without being degraded so they last longer but they are more expensive the disadvantage is that you cannot charge them under 10 degrees celsius i will put the fahrenheit here or something uh, so if you charge them below that temperature they are getting degraded it's very dusty so if you charge them below that temperature they will be degraded Maybe I should just make the box smaller and then I can mount these essential three parts on the outside of the box. It looks pretty cool and it's also very easy to push buttons and change fuses and connect and disconnect solar panels and um, yeah. Maybe I should also consider this. This should probably be mounted here on the top so you can have an outlet with 12 volts. This is a pretty good plan but it was now it's got like loads of unnecessary space inside it. So 
Now I just have the grid charger like put store stored in here and this you also want to take out sometimes to charge other things. The point of this project is not to make like a storage box, it's it's to make something that is usable. So maybe I'll just shove parts of this off and then I can mount everything on top in a cool way and then I will continue with the design of this project. I also need to have some kind of handles so I will drill some holes in the sides maybe. This is like a prototyping project kind of thing. I don't do like pre-planned perfect projects. It's not my thing. Part of the, the invention process of an inventor, a space traveler, is to prototype and to change stuff that doesn't work while you're working on it. I also bought too few screws, but I borrowed some of my sister. Okay, so I cut the top of it off and now it should be more small. So I will do some handles now, I think. I was thinking of doing this battery box like waterproofed and like fiberglass it all over but the problem with waterproofing it would be that if it rains or fills with water the water stays inside of it and um, I think it's just better to have it a little bit leaky and just rain if it's if it ever happens This is like just just small enough to not really fit for screwing it in. So I need to make some some bigger lid, I think. Yeah. So I had to bring out some new plywood. This this is a buck boost converter. It converts different voltages to a set voltage. So I want this to be, if I want an outlet to be exactly 12 volts, not 13 or 11 volts, I can use this and uh, then hook up the, I don't think these are very sensitive like cigarette plugs. I think these can take different voltages think they can take yeah these can take 12 to 24 volts so they are not uh, sensitive to different voltages but if I want to hook up my synth to this battery box I need something like this in between and I wanted to build it into this box but I'm not certain <laughs> if I can fit it somewhere I mean I, I want to I want to have everything laid out on top of this lid to make it simple, super simple, but I guess I might have to have this in my synth box instead. I'm not 
sure this works the way it's supposed to work, but... And I'm not sure how many watts this cinema projector is requiring. But we'll try with the 150 watts inverter. No, I, I think that's a bad sign. I think it requires more. Hmm. Too bad. What to do? Maybe it won't work from from this battery system, but maybe something something less battery intensive will work. It's working. I will try to make a small overview of the schematics. So the sun comes in here through the solar panels. They're either on the boat or on the house, depending on where I am at the moment. They go through a fuse and into the charge controller and the charge controller goes to the battery through a fuse and uh, the minus also not just the the red positive ones goes through fuses i'm not an electrician again so don't trust me <laughs> then we have the load it's what we are consuming that goes out through two fuses and one goes just to an electricity out and the other goes to this inverter and it's a 300 watt inverter and it works with my cinema and uh, most things i want to use it for like my synthesizer but it accidentally when i arranged my amusement park i had a friend who is a dj and it kind of broke his equipment so it's not really 100% safe and I haven't had anything I had one synth go bad but it was a 12 volt charger the small one I showed you so I haven't got anything broken because of the inverter but it's also just 300 watts so it's not enough for a vacuum for example which would require a thousand watts or something like that and an induction cooktop would also require something require something like that so that you would have to use a bigger inverter and i have a big one i got from talasbuan but it's very big <laughs> i can show you so this is that inverter and this summer we just i just plugged a solar panel to a car battery and charged the one wheels with this one and that worked great, but it's a big, big thing and not very compact. So because it's a 12 volt system, it's a lot of current that goes through the wires. So the wires need to be very thick and I'm very satisfied with my build and I can fix it if something breaks, but it's also not as safe as one of those pre-built ones. This one is for sure cheaper, but if you're living off grid, this is also 100 amp hours, which is 1000, one, 1,200 watt hours, which is pretty big. And the price of this um, is about, let's see, maybe seven, eight hundred dollars, something like that. So it's uh, probably much cheaper 
for the amount of stored energy, but it's also, it's not fun to blow up your friend's <laughs> expensive DJ equipment. But uh, this will live in the here in the amusement park, making the cinema work and make my boat run of this. I also got an induction cooktop on the boat, so I will try with this big inverter to use that, but that's a project for the future. So that concludes my review and build of my do-it-yourself doomsday, off-grid doomsday battery. And um, I'm very satisfied. I've used it for over a year now and I ran out of uh, energy, electricity in uh, November, the 16th of November last year. So 200 watts of solar lasted me all the way into November. And uh, then I didn't use induction or like any heating from it. So it's not for that, but soldering, charging, charging my uh, tool batteries and computer cameras and all that stuff. So thank you for watching this video and uh, we will see each other next time. Thank you.